Four men turning the page on a new chapter in human spaceflight. Stop. Go Falcon, go Dragon. Godspeed, Axiom 1. A game-changing mission. People from all over were on the Space Coast to see it happen. The first crew of private astronauts now in orbit. Getting ready for bed at the moment. Tomorrow morning, the real work begins. Glad you're with us tonight. I'm Matt Austin. And I'm Lisa Bell. We have team coverage tonight of the history-making launch, starting with New 6's Eric Von Inken at the Kennedy Space Center with why this is such a big deal. Just minutes ago, the four men went to bed. They've been up for a very long time today. The alarm clock went off at 2.30, but likely some of them weren't even sleeping before that. Knowing the expectations that they're facing, if they want to be called astronauts, they must now perform like astronauts. Until today, this had never happened, sending private citizens to NASA's space station from American soil, because until a few years ago, NASA didn't allow it. NASA changed its stance over the past few years. Why? Because we want to spend our resources not in low Earth orbit. We want to get out and explore the heavens. We're going back to the moon and learn how to live and work in a hostile environment for long periods of time in order for us to go to Mars. That's where we want to concentrate our efforts in the human space program. Live view inside the cabin. They just got the OK to lift their visors. Right. So now Axiom Space, run by NASA's former space station program manager, is capitalizing on the opportunity, buying the rocket ride from SpaceX and reimbursing NASA for the space station time and sending up a Canadian philanthropist, an Israeli fighter pilot who was a close friend of the first Israeli astronaut killed on Shuttle Columbia in 2003 and a charitable thrill seeker from Ohio who all paid $55 million a seat. That was a hell of a ride and we'll be looking forward to the next 10 days. Eight of the next 10 days in space will include eating, sleeping, and experimenting on the space station. They brought with them 25 experiments in all for hospitals and universities all over the world. Experiments that otherwise might never have made it to space. The four men say they expect to be extremely busy, essentially proving themselves to earn the title of astronaut, bettering their humankind as they have done on Earth, this time in space. And their work begins bright and early tomorrow at 7.45 a.m. That's when docking is with the International Space Station, but they'll be up way before that, getting into their suits and reviewing all of their procedures. We're now at the Kennedy Space Center. Eric Von Aiken getting results. News 6. Eric, thank you. As the crew reached microgravity during the launch, you might have noticed a stuffed toy floating in the cabin. The zero-G indicator for this launch was Carmel the Dog. That is the mascot for Montreal Children's Hospital Foundation. According to Axiom Space, the crew picked Carmel as the zero-G indicator because some of the research on the space station will include several projects led by the hospital. Canadian philanthropist Mark Pathy will be leading that research.